Hey everyone, I wanted to go over 7.1 and 7.2 again. I'm getting a lot of emails where students are simply saying, I don't understand anything, or I don't know what to do once I start looking at the proof. And just for the record, I was not ignoring your emails. I've just been trying to figure out the best way to show you how to approach these. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to have this sheet. And it is found in the modules at the very bottom. It should be a module titled Handouts. I would suggest printing this out. This is the holy grail for everything. So since we're only going over 7.1 and 7.2, so for the purposes of this video, we are only looking at these right here, okay? The ones down below, those are 7.3 and 7.4, which I'll make a separate video for that. Okay, so let's look at some of these. Modus ponens. This is the one that we've had for a really long time. When you get the antecedent, then you can pull out the consequent. Okay, modus tollens. When you get the negation of the consequent, you get the negation of the antecedent. Hypothetical syllogism is pretty straightforward. The cues kind of cancel each other out, and then you want to drop these down. Disjunctive syllogism, you need the negation of one side, and then you can grab the other side. Constructive dilemma is a little bit more tricky, but this is all about a pattern. So first of all, it does absolutely have to be a horseshoe, has to be a horseshoe, has to be a dot. When you get P, or R, which is what they gave us right here, then you can get Q or S. Simplification, I'm noticing a lot of you are simplifying when you really shouldn't be simplifying. We have to have the main operator be the dot. Okay, so if you have something, if you have something like this, you cannot simplify because in this case, your main operator is a horseshoe. You have to get this on a line by itself, or to just like that, then you can simplify, okay? Conjunction, whenever you have anything on a line and another line, you can conjunct them and the main operator must be a dot. And addition, you can add anything you want, but be certain it's actually a wedge. Okay, so that's just a little bit of review real fast. What I've done here is I put some problems and what I want to do is I want to go over these with you but I don't necessarily want to solve them the traditional way I want you to just I put this I want you to think the same way I think when I look at these problems okay so what I'm looking at this first of all I'm seeing a whole lot of horseshoes and the first thing I'm noticing is this right here and this right there they line up perfect so what I want to do is right away, I want to get that L because of two and three modus ponens. And if you need a refresher, pull out your piece of paper. Let's get rid of some of this here. And you'll see we are using this one right here. I have this right here on one line. I have the antecedent. That way I get to pull out the consequent, okay? And that should be one that you see right away. Okay, so now I have an L here. So let's see, what is another one that just stands out to me? Well, the other one is right here. So I have the antecedent on a line by itself. So that way I get to pull out the consequent. So I'm gonna end up with M or L to R, and this time it's one and two modus ponens. Okay, so now I'm in a situation right down here where I have, as a main operator, a wedge. Now the only way I can split these two apart and try to get this R by itself is I need to get rid of this M. The only way that's gonna work is if I have a not M. So it'll end up looking like this.
So what happens here is the M and the not M cancel each other out, and then you end up with L to R. So that would be the next line. So we're going to end up with L to R with 3, oops, 3 and 5 ds. Now, let me clean this up so it doesn't look like a crazy person. Okay, now we have L2R, so we're really close. So if you notice, we have an L here, we have an L here. So now we get our R by 4 and 6 Mohs ponens. And then we got this one right here from 3 and 5 ds. And we know we're done because these line up perfect. So for this one, it was just a lot of modus ponens and ds. Okay, so let's look at this one. So we need not z. Okay, so we look over here and we see, oh, we have a z right here, but it's not a negation. So the odds are I'm going to have to negate this somehow, but we're not there yet. We're just thinking things through right now. So we go up here, look at our first premise and see what we can do with that with some, one of these other ones. So this is like section one and section two from each one of the chapters. So you have R here and you have a not R here. So we've got it lined up perfect. That we're going to get if T then R. And we're going to be using DS, just like we just did. So we're using 1, 2, DS. Okay, so now that we have if T then R, well, let's look over here and we notice we have not R and we have R here. So now we're going to end up using modus tollens. So this one was ds this one will be modus oops tollens so now we have a not r to an r so that means we get to bring down the not t okay so this time we're using two and five modus tollens okay now we have not t so we get to do it again you look at line three you get m to t. Then line six we have not t and then that'll give us not m. So we'll get not m and we're going to be using line three and six to get modus tollens again. Okay now we have not m. You guys catching on to this? Kind of a little game here. You're doing each step so you can get the next step. And now we have not M, which is right there. So let me line it up for you. And we have not M. So now we're going to get not Z. So we're using 4 and 7. And we're using modus tollens again. And again, oops. We know we're done because they line up. 